Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayontidal and this is the Masta MX-30. Finally, I get to test it. So uh, you guys know the drill. This is going to be the range test. Uh, let me show you. Well, I've shown you before, but that was just in a, in a showroom event. So now you see it in the wild. So it has a front that uh, resembles the CX-30. I think that's what it's called. Uh, the fossil version but the fossil has a bigger grill but it has the the distinct uh, musta design elements in the front <clears throat> okay what else yeah okay important for this test we are equipped with continental viking contact 7 front tire 215 55 18 i think the rear should be the same yeah 250 yeah same 18 there also, 18 inches. Hmm. But Continental Viking Contact 7, they are quiet. All right, back, looks like this. Okay, nothing to see, nothing to see. What you want to see is this Colgate much? Huh? We came here with around 60% and I've been camped here for 46 minutes. And it was initially going at 30 kilowatt just briefly. Then it dropped to 15 kilowatt, and then 12 kilowatt, and then 10 kilowatt, right before we started recording. And now we're down to 9 kilowatt. <laughs> yeah, so I will show you more inside. So interesting stuff. Um, what else should I say? Yeah, okay, let me show you now. So uh, if you guys haven't seen it before, it just needs to be shown once and never more. It has suicide doors. The good and the bad things with suicide doors. <laughs> Actually don't know why are they called suicide doors. And then Masta has been making cork before. That was in the old days. So here, now we can actually see the interior, but you know what? I should focus on the interior in, in a separate video because people who watch this video, they probably just want to see the range of it. So I will actually concentrate on the range um range part of it so uh let me show you now we have a little uh, screen here down here for adjusting um only for adjusting uh, climate control and whatever is uh, regarding to heating for example heated steering wheel and this one has it yeah um uh, but okay let me focus on the on the important things on this video so let's see now so if we go here if you go to settings and then ev settings then you scroll down, you see high voltage battery heater. You think, ah, oh, dude, noob, you haven't activated the battery heater. Yes, okay. Well, actually, you see, interesting. I don't see this with my eyes, but there's actually some infrared here. I don't know what the infrared is for, but uh, maybe gest gesture? Can we do this? No, it's not, the ca it's not a camera. I'm a noob. But this one is already set to auto. It's either auto or off. So we already have it on automatic. There is no way to force it on. And I noticed something here. You see, we have, we actually have a battery temperature gauge in somewhat inaccurate view. But when I started from home, it was down here somewhere and then it slowly heated up really slowly. And during the charging session, it hasn't really moved at all. It's been staying there since we started charging at around 60%. We've been, we've been charging for eight minutes now. So uh, this one here is very optimistic. It's uh, uh, half an hour ago. It said that I will finish in 20 minutes. So <laughs> 10 minutes here means half an hour real time. So we will probably finish in about half an hour. Uh, one nice thing about the MX-30 is that we always see still a charge in percentage here. And you can also see it inside the screen here. If you go, uh, if you go to, let me see, menu. If you go to information and then, um, no, wait, not this one. Oh, my bad. Um, back, back, back. Uh, high voltage battery monitor. I was like, oh, maybe some, some battery status. Well, nothing to see, nothing to see. Actually, not very useful information here. Uh, <laughs> so, not much to say. Um, so, all right, we're just going to wait a little bit. It's three degrees Celsius. Oh, yeah, I should also mention. I thought it was supposed to be dry today. Yeah, according to the weather forecast, it was not supposed to rain. It rains slightly, but it means that the road is wet. So whatever we result to get today, 
you have to keep in mind that this is not good conditions. Mo most of the time I'll be driving on dry road. So you can expect that the range will be better if you drive on the dry road in summer. Oh yeah, we are finally done, 100%. It took 84 minutes. So now I'm going to use um, eco mode here. This is eco mode in the climate control. There is no setting for drive mode. So just one drive mode. Put in an auto to 100 degrees. We have reset this one. We're gonna reset the, let's see. Uh, we can switch between modes here. This one, hold it down, info. There, good to go. And one thing I noticed with the MX-30 is that there is a fake engine sound and I cannot switch it off. Oh, I, at least I haven't tried to figure out, but let's, let me show you. <laughs> okay, we are on the run now and uh, the nice thing about the MX-30 is that it has head-up display, yeah. This car costs only 250k Nook in Norway and it comes with head-up display. Right, but uh, the bad part is that the head-up display, I mean the, the speed, uh, let me see, yeah, you see the speed limit uh, is not 50 around here. <laughs> it's 110 and then it turns into 100 soon. And another problem is that the auto stair did work earlier today, but suddenly now it didn't work anymore. I think it could be something with the rain, but this is also a bit disappointing that the auto stair doesn't work now. And also, there is some kind of rattling from from behind there somewhere. It's it's this type of um, pole star rattling, you know, that high frequency rattling from the interior. I couldn't. Not, I couldn't um, uh, locate where it was from. I tried to slap on the panels in the back there, but I can't find it. So that's a bit bummer. Okay, weight check. Front axle, oh, sorry. 980. All right. The whole car. 1760, what the heck? 1760 for 35.5 kilowatt hour battery. What? what did they use kryptonite in here? Brace yourself, winter is coming. We have slight tail. Wait, wait, huh? wait, wait a minute. Uh, well, that seems like seems like we have headwind. I thought it was tailwind. Okay, okay, we have the headwind. That's a good. Uh, Good sign, okay. That's Mjorsen today. So this is one of the worst uh, driving conditions for range test. I usually pick nice days. But uh, okay, so the plan is to drive until I have about 50%, then I come back. So the consumption is kind of high. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about that, 194, despite some downhills. Uh, we have to see then. I'm not sure if we can make it to the to the old uh, to Mjus uh, Torna back again. That's 168 kilometers only. We have to see. And you know, it's actually a, a fairly quiet car. That is my impression. Uh, seems to have good soundproofing against the wind, and also from the road-ish. But over here is kind of a noisy tarmac. But the problem is that constant rattling. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear it? Let me move my microphone closer. Can you hear it now? I can't figure out where it's from. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. why is the high beam on? Okay. Uh, okay, uh, I think I need help from my wife uh, to figure out where the sound is from, but we have to do it at home. We are now at Mjöst Turner and we are gonna turn around. So um, this is a good turnaround point because I can check distance. It's supposed to be 84 kilometers to the roundabout. Let's say, yeah, we are almost there. You see roundabout is right there. 84 kilometers, what do we got? What do we got? 83.7 or eight even. You see, that is so close that we can consider this 
speedometer to be very accurate. Oh, okay. The only problem is that we have 50% now. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we can make it back or not. But we can always bail out. Yeah, we can bail out that Nebenes or Minnesun. Yeah, so no problem. Okay, we're getting close to the end now. We have 14% left and GOM claims we have 21 kilometers of range. That's actually plausible. It seems like we have a ratio of 1 to 1 1.5 to 1 in the state of charge versus uh, range. But okay, 21 kilometers of range left and we are still 30 kilometers away from uh, uh, Dar. So there is no way we can make it there. I was even thinking about stopping at Nebenes, but I think we have to bail out already at Minnesun now. So there's no point trying to run it almost down to zero anyway, but um, yeah, this was a little bit short range and also somewhat high consumption compared to some other cars I've tested. We are now at Tsoko K Minnesun. And from time to time I'll stop here. It's a nice place to stop. We have plenty of chargers right by the highway. So um, the battery is, well, the battery temperature is at half right now, whatever that gauge means, but um, it's not going very fast. Let me show you here. I'm going to record uh, a charging session eventually, but uh, this is, it seems like today I've been getting maximum 100 amp only, so it's, it's charging really slow. Uh, okay, but I want to go back to Ionit again uh, to do the charging session over there. So, uh, and also I need to do a little bit of yo-yo. So let's charge up maybe to about 15, ah, uh, maybe I need 20%, 15, 20%, and then we yo-yo back to uh, Ionite. We are back at Ionity, charging up now. I'm recording the charging session. And uh, the stats for this trip was um, 189 watt uh, per kilometer. And we drove almost 150 kilometers with 6% left. So it means that if we went all, down, all the way down to zero, we could do 159 kilometers. That's almost 100 miles. Keep in mind, it was wet today. And yeah, it was wet and also cold, yeah three degrees Celsius, actually one to three degrees Celsius. Uh, but also it worked out that uh, we have 30 kilowatt hour of available energy here. Um, it's 35, yeah, it's a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, some of it is probably hidden in, well, you have braking protection, but I also suspect there is a little bit of uh, discharging loss. So um, right now we are charging at 34 kilowatt <laughs> seems like this car is limited to 100 amp or I'm not sure really maybe the battery is still not hot enough but uh, I need to charge up the car preferably to about 90% I don't think I want to waste my time going to 100% but uh, then we will do the high speed test now it's not optimal today but uh, whatever we will just do whatever measurement we have and that's it so um, I want to know how big is the discharge loss at high speed versus low speed. It could be pretty massive. Good sound. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, guess what? It turns out that as long as the battery is fairly warm, like here, it just climbed up a little bit and then it stayed there for the whole charging session. Then you get a fairly nice and flat curve. So I decided to charge 100%. Now we're going to drive 120. <laughs> this is going to be fun. How far can we drive then? We are on the move now, high speed run. Well, high speed run, yes. Any Germans here? <laughs> Okay, so I have to cruise at 123 kilometers per hour to match the 120 speed. And I think the plan this time, uh, I don't want to uh, mess around at the Minnesun. So I guess I will try to turn around at the 55% mark. And then, yeah, hopefully we can get back to uh, Dahl. But the first thing I noticed is that uh, even at the 120 kilometers per hour and even with wet roads, this car is fairly quiet. Hmm, I have to measure the noise on it. All right, we're down to 50% and we have done 57 kilometers. So, so far, it seems like we can do 114 kilometers total. Now let's check if the state of charge scale is linear or not. We are back at the Ionity charger and um, this time we drove 99.8 kilometers. I should have driven 100 meter more, so it would be 999. <laughs> but anyway, and we had 9% left and the consumption was 274. But again, let me remind you, it was wet outside and cold also. It, this is considered winter consumption in many places in Norway, like Sir Lannet. Um, and that means that we have 110 kilometers of range. And to my big surprise, uh, we can also get out 30 kilowatt hour from this battery when when we are going high ish speed or a higher load so uh, actually it means that uh, it seems like this battery has good uh, or low internal resistance and i also noticed when we were charging close to 100 percent that it went fairly fast so uh, bad cars like honda e would have i think it was five or six percent loss when you go higher speed and then good cars like uh, Tesla or e-tron will have 1% loss and this was 0% loss. I think within 1%. Yeah, probably some measurement errors here. But okay, so interesting and I think just a short wrap up. What do I think about this car? And many people they criticize it for having shit range. I agree, the range is pretty shitty. But um, I have to say I like driving it. It feels quiet. The, the interior is it's nice and good, good, nice to touch. And the sound system is pretty good. Uh, what else? Okay, um, infotainment, you get used to it. Those screens, it doesn't have touch screen. But uh, overall though, yeah, keep in mind, I mean, <laughs> keep remembering, or <laughs> let me remind you that in Norway, this car starts at 250,000 nook, so it competes with Zoe. And uh, to, uh, in my personal uh, opinion, uh, I feel like this one handles and drives and feels better than the Zoe. But Zoe is better uh, technical because it has bigger battery, faster charging, faster onboard charger also. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't. Zoe doesn't have adaptive cruise control. This one has it, but the, the auto steer here didn't work very well today. So, um, you know, I'm not going to just write it off and say that this is a shit car, don't buy it. I say it has its limitation with the range and the charging speed, but for city driving, superb. Uh, this one also has 360 camera. And I think uh, just because I want to know, I'm going to take it on a yellow trip. Because I want to know when you buy this car, you know, you don't, you don't buy a car only to drive around the city. You buy a car to do other things too. And going, okay, we're not going to do, do 1000 kilometer challenge here. Uh, or we're not going to drive from here to Lufoten, but from here to Yelo, it's a typical uh, weekend trip uh, to the cabin. And it is likely that some people might want to buy this car and also use it for stuff like that. So, yeah, I think. That's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.